Pulse signal therapy is what it stands for. And pulsed electromagnetic field therapy has been around actually since 1970s in various forms. Dr. Richard Markle is the actual creator of PST. And he created the technology and it actually has been in use in Europe and Canada since 1992 for humans. Not yet here, but in 94 they did approve it for use with animals here in the U.S. So it's been around for a while. And what essentially it is is that you're dealing with a pulsating magnetic field that mimics the body's own natural biological frequencies. So its job is it will go to the targeted site, the affected site, the area where the condition is, and will actually help regenerate and heal. And that includes um, with bones, that includes cartilage, that includes the points of attachment with tendons and ligaments, that in includes um, intervertebral disc disease, um, dealing with patients like that. It has a tremendous amount of applications. And the great thing is there's no side effects. And to this day, it's fantastic because it only is usually something that needs to be done once in a patient's life. There are very few patients that will actually need it twice. It stimulates directly cellular repair it through direct induction. The easiest way to explain it is that it is working directly with that animal's body through its own biological frequencies, it's stimulating that, it's, it's actually stimulating cellular repair. We're not just masking the pain. We're not just giving temporary relief. This is a long-term solution. This is a regeneration of tissue and joints and ligaments and tendons that are in total disrepair and we are regenerating the cells and we are actually healing. There's not many things out there that you can say this will help heal you. So based on the extensive research they've done, based on just the fantastic results that not only do they have printed but also that I've seen myself with the patients I've treated, um, hands down, best thing is really let's go with something that's going to heal. It's extremely non-invasive, and it's, it treats anything that's under this dome. So if it's the hind end or if it's the front end, I usually will actually, if I have to lift the patient up here, I will lift the patient up here. If not, then I will direct them if they can do it themselves. And they literally sit down. Um, if it's their hips that are in here, they sit down. They usually literally lay down, put their head here, I rub on them for half an hour. It's really hard work. And it is on a timer, so it knows 30 minutes is up, it beeps, and you're done. Even the most spastic dogs will sit in this thing calmly. A, probably because I'm not doing anything and nobody's doing anything to them, so it's a very relaxing time. But B, a lot of patients will actually experience a, a slight warming, a slight tingling, in the area that is painful or the affected area. So that actually makes them, I think, feel better. Now, I don't know, I've never asked, but the fact that they sit so calmly here and don't have any issue with it, it tells me that it, it definitely doesn't hurt. You can, treat, you can treat any kind of animal in here, as long as they'll sit and stay. <laughs>
uh, shoulders, you name it. It does wonders for elbows. And this is something that almost everybody will tell you, elbows are the hardest thing to rehab just because they're such a loading joint and they're small. The portable pulse signal therapy, which I've also gone ahead and I purchased because this way clients can take it home, is it has a paddle. And by wedging the elbow in the middle of this paddle in an extended position, we can actually help the elbow finally. So it has an application where, for the most part, we never had an answer or of, of truly how we can get those dogs to stop limping and get them to feel better. There are very few limitations. It, the only, and I'll preface this ahead of time, is if there's any concern or feeling that the animal may have a cancerous tumor or some sort of cancer, whether it's bone cancer, whether it's you know abdominal cancer, whatever it happens to be, then you cannot use the pulse signal therapy. Why? Because it is stimulating the cells. If you're gonna stimulate cancer cells, the cancer's gonna get worse. Okay, it cannot differentiate between that. So that's the only patient that I cannot use it on. Um, there's no age restrictions. There are many, many different conditions that I've used it on. There was probably one or two out of the 250 that I've treated that when they came in, their condition was so poor. Their joints had no mobility and their condition was something that I could only give basically palliative care. Those patients needed two series. Other than that, everybody else needed the one. It's a, a, a nine um, day consecutive day treatment. So you're treating that particular affected area for 30 minutes every single day for nine days. Around the fifth or sixth treatment, the patient may actually get that initial pain relief, decrease in pain because there's a decrease in inflammation in that area. But the actual physiological changes, because physiological changes take time, it will take up to 12 weeks following the last treatment. But most of the actual changes that clients can see will be around four to six weeks following the, the, the final treatment of the PST. So it is a cumulative effect. It's not a, a magic pill that you take and the next day the dog's perfect. Um, it's definitely something that does take its time. So what we normally do is we may go ahead and do pulse signal therapy, but at the same time be treating with cold laser therapy because the cold laser will allow for a more immediate effect and will also help the pulse signal therapy. And then the pulse signal therapy can take time to build it. When we have a, a new patient, they will always come in for an initial consult first, which can be anywhere from an hour to two hours depending on the extent of the condition for the patient. And during that time, it gives me a chance to not only get a really good history, which oftentimes will take about half an hour, the dog gets comfortable with the room and comfortable with me. And then I will do a full exam from head to toe, as well as treat the patient with body work, um, maybe Eastim, maybe the laser at the same time. And this allows me to inform the client of exactly, this is what's going on with your dog. This is the current range of motion in this joint, for instance. This is what's normal. This is what we can likely achieve. Um, it also gives me a chance to really get the client in tune with their own pets so they know exactly what's going on. And because they are able to now visually see it and then they see the animal and how they progress afterwards, it's, it's a, a crucial time, that initial consult. And then if it is required or it is recommended at that time to do pulse signal therapy, then we'll actually sit down and say, okay, let's plan out a date, what times work best for you. Um, it is something that can be done in four and a half days if on a time crunch. The treatments just need to be at least eight hours apart. So if the client's willing to come in the super early morning and then later on in the afternoon, we can do that. Uh, but most will opt for the once a day. Let's say there's a shoulder problem and let's say there is also a hip issue. Can we do both at the same time? Can we treat half an hour up here and then half an hour back here? 
there's new research, there's research that's out there say, yes, you can, but it's going to minimize the effectiveness. So you can do the nine days initially on the worst area, let's say it's the hip, and then you can start another series thereafter for um, the shoulders. Um, I personally, we don't charge for the body work and the laser therapy that's done at the same time. We just throw it in there. Um, the dog needs it, the dog needs it. And then depending on the extent of the condition or whether there's multiple conditions involved, then the patient may have to still come back once a week after if, if they have multiple um, problems or if they is something minor and they just need to be seen in four weeks and then again at eight weeks um, after the last treatment, then those treatments are at no charge. Something that the combination of the exercises and the body work and the laser therapy um, and proper supplements and nutrition, if that can work for that at dog, we'll go with that because it's, it's working with people with what they can do financially and what they can do time-wise because it is a, a time constraint to, to have to do pulse signal therapy, to come here every single day. Um, so I don't always use it, but definitely for the hip dysplasia, definitely for disc disease, definitely for shoulder problems, elbows now that we've learned that it actually can help. Um, degenerative joint disease, severe in the knees, anything that when you're dealing with a dog that comes in and is already on a slew of pain meds, already has, is de debilitated, um, especially if ones that can't actually get up and walk much, then this is your answer. Yeah. Because you are healing. It's, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's that simple. There's research behind it over 20 years. This technology has been around since the 70s. It's been perfected. The results are phenomenal. Um, I have patients, I have clients, pardon me, that say to me, if anybody wants to know about pulse signal therapy, have them call me. They'll talk to them directly, which is pretty incredible that a client will do that. Um, and the fact that there's absolutely no side effects. There's none. And I don't know that many things you can say that to. So it's a lot about education. And the more people know, the more people research, the more people ask their vet, what else can I do besides this? That's the way you're really going to be able to get this veterinary field um, more. When I say holistic, I'm not talking about homeopathy. I'm talking about the whole picture, looking at the patient with the whole picture in mind, not only the immediate uh, treatment of their pain and the immediate treatment of their condition, but the long-term solution. I love it. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's the most satisfying job I've ever had. Um, dogs get it. They just get it. They're intuitive. They know you're trying to help them. They don't argue with you. <laughs> and the more they realize that they're feeling better and that you're there for them and that you're getting them through this and you're making them feel better, they give back so much more than I've ever experienced. And when a client, when their owner can see that and be a part of that, there's, there's, there's no better feedback. There's no better, there's just no job I can possibly think of that I would love to do more. It's such an amazing thing when you're working with them. They come in in a gurney. They come in in a wheelchair, whatever it happens to be, a doggy wheelchair, or carried in. And either within a first treatment or the sixth treatment, they're actually getting up and moving. It's, it's remarkable. And it's the most satisfying job ever. And it's great for, for the owners to see it too. <laughs>